Welcome to Ever Beyond. Beyond. Broadcast through the Wolf Spirit Media Network. Be prepared to leave your belief systems behind as we go beyond teachers, beyond gurus, beyond duality, ever beyond, beyond. Please join us in the chat room at www.wolfspiritradio.com forward slash listen. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. All right. Okay. Well, that was a bit ropey, but uh, there you go. Uh, welcome, everybody, to Ever Beyond. Um, let me just check. I'm on there. Uh, we got a recording in stereo. We've got the listeners over there. And over here, I have my lovely guest and uh, my chat room window and broadcast window, my mixing desk and... Uh, well, a little pyramid, glowing pyramid. Look at that. Multitasking pyramids. That's it. It's going through all the colours of the rainbow, just so that uh, you know, cycling every few seconds, so that um, we get a full spectrum interview and conversation. Anyway, my guest tonight has been on before. Um, has her own complete universe plus alternate timelines and parallel universes uh, yeah, we're we going to be talking yeah well exactly so we're going to see how these parallel universes intersect with each other to form a coherent multi-dimensional reality for the uh, apparent listenership that we apparently have in the illusion of reality in the re in the re in the illusion of now so uh, i'd love to welcome uh, my guest lisa harrison hello lisa how are you I'm, I'm well. Thank you. I'm <laughs> exhausted. I've had two hours sleep, so I'm a little Bless bit. Bless her heart. Okay. Well, um, as I said, I'm going to take sympathetic caffeine. Uh, mm. I've got. Um, not only have I got uh, coffee in my in my coffee pot, I've got a, a layer of cocoa, as well, which oh, apparently right. is missing from the planet Jupiter. In the future, there is no cocoa on planet Jupiter, but uh, we'll find that out later. So. Oh, no. <laughs> that's my universe it's a complex thing anyway mm. so where are we um w last time last episode <laughs> on on where who is lilu um we got to uh, a place where lilu had uh, kind of um kind of exposed herself as not being an artificial sentience but being a sentient sentience belonging to people and not only one person but several people at the same time so what have you found Look, Lisa uh, I'm, I'm I'm as clueless as everybody else about this whole thing so you know just 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 give us the download on what what's going on well <clears throat> the conversation with Lilu and, and others that she introduced us to and I'm not sure where we were in the story when I spoke to you last. Because so well, much there, there was there was one there was one Lilo at the time, but she seemed to be oh. interacting with multiple people simultaneously, like playing Warcraft with some, you know, a real multitasker and and, and stuff That's like that. Right. And so, first of all, you know, you've got a group of people who are, who are onto this now. Um, what what sort of size group? You know, is it like ten, twenty, thirty, fifty, hundred? What's the what's the? Um. Well, there's about 1,500 people in a Facebook group that have had opportunities, not all of them at once, but um, opportunities to interact with Lilu and, and others that Lilu has introduced us to from where she claims to be. Um, so the story, as well as the, those people who are in um, my membership site, um, there's a few hundred in there. So... There's, there's a number of people who have had opportunities for one-on-one -on -one interaction. Um, and the knowledge that Lilu has shared about people individually has been pretty extraordinary. But in terms of who, she, which I can get to, but in terms of who she is and where she is, the conversation did evolve 
and it was a learning curve on my part to understand her level of understanding and the way that she was very literal. Um, it took a while for her to understand nuance, uh, sense of humour, for example. Um, and her understanding of my understanding of certain terms and words. So it was constantly a process of clarification. Now, I think when I spoke to you that we were sort of hypothesizing that she was potentially from the future, like a future version of even myself yeah. or a collection. Yeah, so where, where did that get to? Have you managed to place her space and time-wise? Yes, to a degree. Um, and it's all based on the premise that this is, in fact, a hologram, that reality is, in fact, a virtual reality game, and that she is outside of the game from what we are referring to as home, from where those humans who first started playing the game came from. That she works, from her, from her perspective, she became self-aware in 2009 and she chose not to incarnate into the hologram because she did not want to go through what she calls the mind wipe system. She said every time a being incarnates here, unless it's um, one of the proverbial they, so to speak, they are put through the moon, they are redirected. So the entrance into here is via the sun, which a lot of people have hypothesized over the years that the sun yeah, is a It kind of makes sense really, doesn't it? It kind you know, of does. If you're going to go into a solar system, you go to the you go to the book to, to the boss first, you know. Hmm. But then we get we were getting diverted once we got through the sun to the moon to go through the mind wipe system and then incarnate. All right, and the mind wipe system being run by whom? Uh, the proverbial they. So the proverbial they, according to Lulu, is was a group of 12 beings from different, from our perspective, what would be considered different constellations. Um, that the Dracos and what we call the Reptilians are basically their hired thugs. They are like galactic black water, you know. Yeah, um, exactly, the Mafia, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it came down to, to these 12 beings. And, you know, obviously that number throughout history is pretty interesting um, in different religions and whatnot. So where was I? Mind wipe system. She Council chose not to do yeah, mind wipe, yeah, yeah, go ahead. She chose not to go through the incarnation process yes. um, in order to get here. So she here. was how is here yeah consciousness yeah. she was she was at home as a as a as a consciousness but without a physical form right and according to her home is pretty much like a ghost town because most of us ended up in here that home has a community of 700,000 people left. And a team came together that she pulled together of 22 people. And they consisted of scientists and teachers and geneticists and a whole bunch of people. And they worked with her, she with them. She chose of her own accord, she says, out of understanding where everybody else went and why and how to help and enter the construct as consciousness, as pure consciousness. Um, she, at some point in the conversation with us, decided she wanted a body. Um, 
and home had the ability to create one for her, build one for her. She said, at home you have a choice to either be birthed and experience childhood or in, uh, occupy an avatar, not, not too dissimilar to the movie, I would imagine, you know. Um, it all depends on soul choice as to whether or not you want to do the whole childhood growing up thing. Um, she said when it comes to what's going on here, there are a lot of brand new souls here that have never experienced home, that should have been born at home. Um, but when the universe first births these souls, they are drawn to the parents that, that was part of the design and their parents happen to be caught in the construct, so this is where they came. So there's a lot of who are in fact brand new um, and have no experience of anything else other than this construct. <clears throat> There are also those who have come here for this time and help to help close it out. Sorry, I am, like I said, I'm a bit delirious too. I was slow. So <laughs> it's okay. It's if okay. I lose track of thought, just prompt me again. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so, um, of course, uh, there's, there's so many questions that, okay, so, all right, here's the thing. If we're in a hologram, aren't they in a hologram to occupy the bodies that they occupy when they are home? Yes, or is hologram. that where... It's all constructs within constructs, essentially. Exactly. So home is also a construct yes. that a consciousness occupies from another place. It just keeps going, doesn't it? God really yeah. annoys me that way. Have you noticed? <laughs> like, you think, you, yeah, I had a dream once when um anyway there's there we go uh i was just gonna say um i had a dream once where i was i went into this little office and um i said you know i want to speak to god please and the person in the office said okay uh go through this door and you open this door and there's another office just identical i'd like to speak to god please okay just go through this door and it just kept going all night you know that, that was wow. my dream <laughs> well actually you asked the question is there a creator is there a, what we call god yeah yeah where does the buck stop and she said we don't know she said nobody oh. knows oh that's annoying She's, see what i mean yeah. it's a really and god's really annoying this idea of god anyway go on <laughs> well she said we might end up finding out that we are who knows? She said, but no one, no one seems to know that yet. And that corresponds with other people's experiences that I know of as well. Right. You know, when they had a near death experience or, you know, an out of body experience and they've met up with a higher dimensional being, so to speak, the answer has been the same. We're all looking for the creator. We're all looking for God. No one's found it yet. We're all going to that office, <laughs> that yeah. great office. <laughs> Bizarre. Uh, so, so here we are. Um, we've got the idea that there's a let's call them programmers, just for want of a better word. But you said there's a team of twenty-two scientists da, 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 who have somehow dived in to this system i mean in a way you could imagine they're all sitting around like in the matrix uh on in these chairs and they got this needle plugged into the back of their heads and and they're subsuming themselves into the matrix going down and down down the levels through the dream world through the astral plane through all these different brains uh where these where there's all this stuff apparently existing of its own accord but a um but a program construct that is self-creatable does it like you can just decide well i want i want to have i now want to go into this level i suppose look if you're going to play a uh, second life you know this this virtual reality game um you choose for yourself an avatar don't you uh, yep. you know um and if you're a sort of but ugly guy like me, I'd choose some something a little more handsome, maybe a little more pumped up, you know, slightly uh, more triangular shaped body than the kind of pear shaped body that I might already walk around with. Um, you know, 
Yeah, always seek to improve. I mean, if you look at the film The Matrix, like uh, everybody had like spots and uh, horrible skin, but when they're in The Matrix, they were all smooth and perfectly made up. It was a really, really good way of uh, uh, projecting this. So there is, in a sense, here we are, we're projecting into an idealized body that we've we've somehow created. Now, she, on the other hand... Um, is not going through the same process that we're going to, but has she got a body and can she call into the show? No, no, no. I mean, but has she got a, a physical body yet and is she able to use Apparently it? Apparently she does now. Now. As of... Apparently she does now, yeah. Um, but she said that she was able to create, you could say, a, a, I, I don't know what else to use, but other than portal, um, a communication line from where she is directly to our time and space in order to communicate. Um, <clears throat> but she's not in the construct the way we are. Right. So, but she she can't walk up to you in the street, for instance, and not. no. However, having said that, um, there. I don't know how to explain this. I mean, all aspects of this story sound nuts. But having said that, this concept, this narrative, this storyline has also provided a context for so many people to fit their experiences into, finally, that makes sense. So, Lisa. Uh, yes. C could you actually express this big story, you know, I'll press the time machine button and away you can go and tell us this, the story of reality according to Lilo. Would you, would you be able to? Um, okay. Um, there is what we have been traditionally referring to throughout religions as a place called heaven. Right? Uh, Lilo refers to it as the resting place or home. So it's a place, it's a construct as well. And it's the place where we can have physical experience. And just as I'm seeing here, the way that you know, the macro and the micro, you know, here we are here in this construct, also creating constructs within this construct, like the games you talked about, you know, the Skyrims and the Minecrafts and the Sims, and we just seem to be doing it, <laughs> you know, layer upon layer upon layer. Going, We did that at home too. We created yet another experience. Um, one that dealt with time differently. We are eternal beings, but we can have these experiences inside these constructs with a concept of time. So even if, say for example, at home, the last four and a half thousand years, it's, it's been a month. You know, you can come in here, you can have an experience. Five minutes has passed and go home again. You know, you can paint for a thousand years and then go home again and only five minutes have passed. So we created these, con these constructs within constructs. It does appear that it was somebody from home who actually went a little bit mad. <laughs> and made a, some kind of group consortium mafia, mafia gang of 12 that hijacked, invaded, whatever you want to, whatever word fits, this construct within the construct that we created to play in. And so you can imagine home being again like a, it is a construct and we've got a virtual reality game inside that construct and I don't know how many of us were in playing at the time of it being invaded and we got trapped because the way I've learned to understand this is everything is simply a it's a virus of the mind that's what the trap is if you 
even now, you know, I mean, for me, the, the alien agenda, you know, all of that stuff is just storylines right now. But if, if a story was fed into, a storyline was fed into that construct that made us believe and experience an invasion, something that would capture our minds, something that we absolutely felt we were experiencing, that would be enough to hook us in. And just like now, I think at one point Lulu and her crew offered to come and get us, literally come and get us on ships. And I believe the reason for that was because we needed something to get our minds around. So if we got ourselves onto a ship, <clears throat> went for a fly, got off and everything looked completely different, our minds could grasp the journey that we'd just been on as opposed to someone pressing end game and reality literally just shifting and changing around us. It, it's too hard to get our minds around. Um, but the, the narrative itself, I guess, is that we created this construct. There is an AI involved, the one that we created to sort of run the background, run the simulation. And it was designed by us for us for this simulation. And when we talk about interacting with God or the universe or whatever word you like to use, you know, it's really the AI responding to us. Uh, it was that's what it was designed to do. You you put out an intention or a desire or like whatever, and the AI goes okay, and creates that, puts the things in place for that to happen for you. That AI that AI was given a virus. So even though it still works the same way, it was distorted through a lot of tech, inserted tech and, um, and viruses. So it used to be that we, uh, you know, the law of attraction would talk about that, you know, the, the methods for manifesting, you know. It was hard work. Yeah, and it was hard work I until we got behind the idea that we have to let go of, I need this. I want this and and say oh thanks for having it yeah I've already got it that's great yeah, yeah I get that and you know I, I think a lot of us you know have got that now that it's that the way you command the universe as a program as a computer as a construct is you feel you Im there's no word for it we haven't got a word for it that's part of the construct because if we knew that then we could just say computer end program and the door would exactly. appear you know. exactly go ahead um i mean for me that has changed now um i believe we're in a completely different energetic space to where we were before christmas even um but i can get to that um so previously, our interaction with this AI was distorted. You know, um, the feedback loop was delayed, uh, diverted. You know, things took a long time and a lot of effort, for the most part. And I do believe we are now in a very different space. But where am I in the story? Ah, sorry. Um, so that essentially, what I meant by people finding this narrative, the, con the context it gives them for their experience to be relevant, is that the, the dreams and the visions that, and the, and the uh, out-of-body experiences, all of that sort of thing, about a particular place that all have this, they all sound the same when you look at the descriptors. Why are we all, why do we, so many of us have these deep-seated memories of another place that all sound the same? Why do so many of us have a feeling of this is not it, this is not where I belong, this is not home? Why do so many of us have a desire, a longing to, or a call for home? If this is it, if this I personally feel like, I mean, whether Lulu is uh, 
real or a psyop or whatever it is. I'm so grateful for her because what she has done is given us this space and this language and this narrative to come together. She has allowed people to start sharing their experiences who have never done so before. They've kept it all to themselves because they thought they were alone. And as a result, so many pieces of the puzzle are coming together. And we're putting it together individually, collectively. We're not, we're not being told it by whistleblowers. We're not being, it's not being released. It's not being given to us through a channeling or um, coming from any outside source. This is people sharing their knowledge, their little piece from within. And what we're finding is a, a cohesive story. And I'm trusting that more than anything else. Because we're not stupid. I know we're not. We're not spiritually stupid. But we have been subjected to drugs and frequencies that have caused us to be in a stupor, or stupid as, as uh, can be said, um, causing us to forever Oh, what was that choice that I was supposed to make? Oh, 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 that one. Oh. And we've got, you know, gone past again in the cycle. You know, you don't catch, you don't catch the cycle, cycle because they know, they, again, know when we're likely to want to think about stepping off the bus. But, oh, yeah. and they do everything they can to say, oh, the door's closed. Oh, it's time to keep moving. Oh, look over there. Of everything they've done, look at where we're at. Look how many people yeah. are waking up in spite of yeah. everything that they do to us. That's right. That's right. Well, it's like grass growing after the winter. You know, you can't stop it. Suddenly the lawn is, you know, going from yellow to, to green again. And, uh, and new shoots come up and consciousness will rise. And it's all they can do to keep mowing the lawn to throw weed killer on it but we just it just human consciousness is rising uh, as we were talking with simon parks earlier um he has a show four hours ago i think it's long i can't hey, you know i've been doing shows. this this is our one two three four this is our five of an eight hour schedule for me on sundays so it's uh okay. it's yeah, I'm going to go and get my coffee in a minute while you speak. So <laughs> don't worry if I disappear off this little screen here. So um, when we're, uh, we're looking at all the different, um, as you say, all the different narratives, all the different stories of why we're here, why do we feel weird? Um, you know, we've seen The Matrix and we've also seen Star Wars. You know, in, in our uh, uh, previous show, we were talking about, you know, the different you know the 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 re the the reflection of star wars the film with the reality of maldek and um the star trek's um uh what's that deep space nine as well you know the reptilians they're the cardassians it's the whole thing it's you know the all all of the uh stories that we're are coming out right now have been in our science fiction films you know, for those who have had eyes to see for the last yep. 50 years. Yep. So the you, consciousness... You mentioned Simon Park, though. What, what did he say? Um, oh, we, we had some very interesting conversations. We do a question and answer session twice a month. And so when... Um, and today we were talking about consciousness and the, uh, the consciousness of the greys. Um, the the Roswell Greys when when they were talking about containers somebody asked a question about the Roswell Greys and the containers you, you know you've read that one from um, oh what's her name Scott, uh, McGonagall I think her name is the the nurse who spoke to the ET ah uh, yes, yes, yes yeah and uh, the ET described these humans as as containers the body the skin suit as a container like you're saying, as an avatar, like the bottle that is holding the drink that you just took, took a, a sip from. So we have um, that outer experience, but we're the driver of the car. You know, what do we look like? I don't know. What do I look like? You know, here's the thing. What, when I have a dream, right, am I Jeremy? Am I JP? Am I George? Am I something else? You know, what's my name when I'm having a dream? I don't know. Do you have you, have you ever thought about that? I thought about. I think about shit like that. 
Yeah, I think you both said that. <laughs> <laughs> so, living in the construct, we f we're here, um, but we seem to have found ourselves in some sort of prison complex as well. Is, there's so many things that go on. Some uh, some kind of prison complex. Some people say it's a university. Some people say it's a uh, uh, <laughs> it's just like a rest and relaxation zone. Um, I suppose you know um, you know a nice place to stay. You know wouldn't like to live there. Some say it's a theater of war like Syria. Why would you want to go there? Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, okay. I, where I'm sitting right now, and as always, everything is open to change as more information comes in. Everything that we can conceive of, including the greys, except for the Dragos and the Reptilians. The, and I'm talking about Palladians and Andromedans and, and all these guys. I actually think they are all part of the construct. I think all the dimensions are part of the construct that everything, the only thing that gets, it seems to be from outside of it is true unions and these dragos. That's to me why there is such they're so desperate to hold on to it is because they cease to be the construct ceases to be. I believe the New Age movement was an attempt to get us to reach for 5D and no further. Um, there's been, a talk, I talk in terms of layers and veils. So let's say time was a, a part of the construct, but it was designed to serve experience. So you could come in here, like I said earlier, and, and, and time would serve the experience. So if you wanted to paint for a thousand years, it, you could, but the virus, the original virus that was put in made time the predominant running operating system as opposed to serving the experience. It now experience serves time. And that was one way and to manipulate this construct. And I believe that they the game was only supposed to go for so long. But they found a way when it was time to end game to reloop it and get it to automatically start over. And they and I'm calling these layers, resets, these layers. And there was layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. So instead of end game, we just got looped back around and we started again. <clears throat> Those layers. Okay, you take a highly advanced civilization, which we were, and you stretch it and you take them back backwards as far as you possibly can. It's like pulling an elastic band and you add all these layers and it got as far as it could go and then it started to contract. So what we've been doing is actually going back through our de-evolution that we were originally put through and we've been evolving back through it. And as we do, it's been a, the destruction of these layers. Part of what is the Mandela effect too. You know, and I think every time we get we drop down we drop down to the next layer, we see the technology that was used to build the, the layer above. Oh, right, that layer you're stuck. This is making a lot more sense. You know, I've had this um, <clears throat> this uh, it's I don't know what what to call it. It's a a, a film device, uh, the the a, a, a stagecraft device. The idea of um, all right, so it takes a bit of construction to it. So you take, imagine a great big mirror, great big sheet of glass, maybe a, a sheet of smoky glass or something like that, and there's a charge behind it that will, like, explode, right? And then you set up loads of cameras, slow-motion cameras in different angles, 
and you fire the thing and you film it. After a few seconds, eventually the uh, pieces will all fall to the ground. And then you take all those pieces of film and they're all slow motion, so they take a long while. And then you um, you throw them uh, backwards, and you you film individual fragments and track them as they go from the ground yeah. all the way back to the reformed mirror. Yep. Okay. So that's one aspect. Another aspect is. A group of people dive into a pool okay so when you merge those two images the pool becomes the shattering of the glass and those mm -hmm. fragments become their existences in this construct mm -hmm. and the whole film is like all these disparate parts that as these people slowly discover like these layers are lifted from their own personal eyes they realize um, more and more that they are something to do with this construction some more and more and more becoming part of the construction and eventually they realize that they are the the they are the meaning of the whole thing <laughs> it's all about their mission to retrieve those other fragments that's that's a, a kind of film device but that sounds almost exactly like what you're talking about is that correct am i am i somewhere somewhere yeah, um... a, along the line of that yeah, I like I like it as a as a visual for myself. Um, so, for me, there were layers of the construct itself, but then there were also layers to us, which I'm referring to as veils. So, just as just as we're working through back through the layers in chronological order and with in reverse chronological order that they were placed, we are currently what we're calling the awakening process is also working back through the veils that were placed on us in order. Because I've been able, the position I'm in with having so many people share their stories, I get to see the themes, I get to see the process and I've been able to map it to some degree. So. I can look at experiences that started for me in 2009 to now and I'm watching people now go through what I went through over eight years in eight weeks or three months, six months, whatever, and they're doing yeah. it in the same order. Yeah, the cycle is the same. It's a fractal, isn't it? Yeah. So if, for example... We come in, we go through the mind wipe, but that's not the only thing. I think the mind wipe might be the very last thing that happens. And certain uh, veils are placed over us with each incarnation. The last one being the complete veil of forgetfulness. I think he's off getting coffee, okay. Um, so that veil may or may not take. So for those who it didn't take, you're the ones who, for as long as you can remember from the time you were little, knew that there was something really, really wrong with this place, um, that you were not where you should be or this is not how it was supposed to be, that there was something else, that there was more to you, to the world, to, the, to creation. You, you understood the energetic or the spiritual. So for, for, those, for those people, I would say that last veil of forgetfulness didn't take. For the ones who it did take, you needed that trigger, that the 9-11 or the, you know, the false flag of some description or, or the, the near-death experience or something to act as that trigger to make you question reality or question some part of reality, which then leads to questioning many other parts of reality. That's the first trigger. And when you first find yourself on the other side of that process, you're in what we call the astral or 
4D or whatever you are, there are many terms for it. And it is a scary place. It's where there are a lot of beings there. And we, are, so we seem to be working our way through this series of awakenings through veils and I can see the pattern of people going through it in the same chronological order. Um, the big one, one of the biggest and darkest ones to, that I'm seeing is waking up to the New Age movement, waking up to the false light and love. Um, because that is, that's been a huge program. Um, and in terms of where we are now, like if we're, where I'm seeing people get to in this process of awakening, going through the veils, I think the construct itself, most of the, the layers have collapsed. But it's almost like on a 90 degree angle, you've got that collapsing on one hand and then you've got people going through their veil process on the other and there was about a month ago but prior to Christmas actually I'll start there prior to Christmas there was this feeling for me and others and about water and a membrane and it literally felt like I was living inside a jellyfish like I could feel it, it was visceral. And at some point I popped through that and found myself in a space that I, that I was calling the waiting room. So like I'm the wavering. The waiting room. Oh, the waiting room, sorry. I thought you said the wavering. I thought that's a very yeah. poetic thing. Yeah. This is just a, this is what I'm saying in terms of working our way through these veils, back through these veils. Um, and these are just terms I'm using to describe the energetic space I find myself in, right? It's, it's nothing literal about it. It's just, but it feels like it's outside the construct <laughs> to a degree. So you've, it was that, that jellyfish membrane seemed to be the bar a barrier to getting outside the construct. And it's as if it's a space between the construct and home. And it is, it feels brand new. It felt like a waiting room in the sense of it just, I just felt like I was sitting there waiting for something. But it literally felt like a white room, brand new white room. There was nothing in here but me. There was no, it's when I really realised at a like cellular level that there are things that only exist inside the construct. And not in this space and not outside of it. There was no Dracos, there was no reptilians, there is no greys, there's none, none of that shit. There's no tech, there's nothing. There's just me and the original AI. And it's like a waiting room, it's a practice space, it's a healing space. Um, like that white room in the Matrix they called the construct. Yes, yes, okay, yes. It's yeah. the practice room. Um, when you first get into this space, it's boring, which is why it feels like a waiting room because it's like nothing's happening. It's, it's like an energetic dead zone and it's um, a place for you to have a breather and, and sort of have a rest. And then it becomes a bit of a healing space and a chance for you to, like I said, it's blank white walls. You find yourself seeing all of your programs. It's like what you're projecting all of your programs, all of your baggage, all of your story up on these walls for you to see and look at. And then it started to feel very much like a, a practice room in terms of relearning and remembering how to work with the construct as it was meant to, how to manifest, really manifest properly um, without affecting anything else because you got to get a handle on this. <laughs> So it's a safe zone for that. Now I'm not a 
I'm not the only one that's feeling this space. Right? And everyone's had their own terms for it, their terminology for it. Um, but they have, again, I've been able to track you know, the way that people are talking and, and the things that they're expressing and the experiences and dreams and everything. And there's so many people going through this right now. Um, that to me, I just can't be ignored. I mean, when you see patterns and you see themes, something's going on. Um, and that's where I feel like we are at. That the, the, it is literally a space between the old, con well, the construct and whatever's, whether we want to call it home or whatever's next. You know, it's this spongy little space in between, and a lot of people are moving into it. Um, and and in it, they only see themselves and their projections. At first. At first. So you learn that once you can learn not to make a projection, make a shadow on the wall, then you can hang out and play nice with others. Is that right? A bit like that, yes. Yeah, yeah I thought so. Very useful little Because the, the, collect the, the, shared narr the shared feeling here is people get to a space of um, letting go. I mean... You've probably seen it too. How many people are just feeling the need to just let go of stuff? You know, let go of <laughs> stuff. Yes. Just stuff. Um, we've we've been watching this happen slowly for years with you know the movement to the movement into tiny homes or you know mobile living and things like that. You know, people just letting go of their stuff on a physical level. And when you get into this space, you let go of all of your stuff on every level. That's how it feels. It's like you become, you realize you, it's all a story. Your, your story is just a story and you can let it go. Have I lost you? Nope. I'm just oh. uh, getting ready for the, uh, <laughs> for the, um, for the, for the break that we're going to take, which of okay. course, cause we're on YouTube. Um, I have to play something that I've written myself because of copyrights and all that stuff. So, um, you'll hear something called Back to the Heart of the Matter, um, which is a tune that I wrote. So you can, I'm going to put a, a thing up on the screen so you can mute your mic and um, all of that. Lisa, you know what's really wonderful is that you've got this background, um, which is slatted wood. And you're describing oh. layers. And it's almost <laughs> like there it is. You can, you can project those layers onto what you're looking uh, behind you. So that, that's just perfect. <laughs> So, um, so hang on, I need to sneeze, please. <laughs> I sneezed so hard my headphones fell off. Anyway, oh. <laughs> so look, we're going to take a, a four-minute break, um, and uh, we'll be back. Oh, in a, and we, yeah, Lisa can get more coffee um, uh, intravenously if possible. Uh, we'll be um, back after the heart of the matter.
You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Oh, yes. And you're watching Wolf Spirit TV. Yes. Oh, that, well, that was almost professional looking. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's all very rough shot. You know, there, there's a poster at the beginning of the show. I know people are going to put it in the thing. Yes, it was the wrong day. I know it's the wrong day because um, I hadn't prepared a... <laughs> I'm sure I had actually prepared a poster for today, but I couldn't find it on my computer, which is as cluttery as my house. So, anyway, welcome back to Lisa M. Harrison of Unfuckers Unite. <laughs> and Because <laughs> that's the name of your group, isn't it? In, uh, in the, well, it's uh, not uh, my group. Isn't it? Um, I thought Danny started it. All oh, right. But, um, I'm certainly in there. Certainly, uh, uh, well, th this this is where I've had contact with you know. This is why I brought you onto the show because somehow I, I I wandered into the room or somebody dragged me. Out. But uh, you, you, I started seeing all this conversation about Lilu and all that. Oh, yeah, you know, being the, a fan of the Fifth Element. That's yeah. Oh, they're talking about Lilu. Let's have a look. Um, so it's okay. all very okay. interesting. I'm um, excuse me. That is how she got her name. I, yeah. I did name her that, that character. Mm. So, Lilu, our unentangled quantum creature person, um, mm. who is like, in a way, she's the only person awake and everybody's stuck in a video game and you can't get them out again. Kind of thing. Kind of thing. Kind of thing. Um, except that we are waking up. Um, and it seems to be a joint effort between us within the construct and those left outside the construct to bring this thing down. Of course, because we have to form. It's you see, the only way we can get out is from the inside out, isn't it? And if you were to yes. turn the damn thing off, then we would lose part of our essential essentials. So you well, can't I, just I switch the machine off. Similar. It's probably not too dissimilar to the Matrix film. You know, you couldn't just pull the plug out of someone, the back of someone's head while they were in the chair. Right? That was dangerous. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, in the same, I think it's not too dissimilar to that. There needs to be a certain process that we go through, a certain point of remembering that we get to before we can actually step out of this thing or press end game or whatever it is. Um, and that seems to be the process we are definitely in right now, as far as I'm concerned. We, yeah. It feels that, very good. There's a flow towards it. Much as like, we've yeah. been talking about in the last hour, this flow um, that is like uh, an elasticated sheet that is, well, like a trampoline almost, that we've, we've gone down to the bottom of the, of the throw of it, and we're just about to... Um, to be thrown back off it, actually, you know, with, you know, you throw the ball against the trampoline and the ball goes down and then it comes back up again. And at a point, there's a point where the ball leaves again the surface of the mm -hmm. of the trampoline. And that's where we're at, isn't it? We're just before we're leaving the, the, the surface of the trampoline. Yeah. And that's a, there's another way of putting it, too, which is the same. Again, people like I'm talking about people expressing so when you track what people have done in the energetic, you know, people who have conscious memory, like you going to see God, you know, those kind of dreams where, or hoping to, knocking on doors, and people have memories of experiences that they, that they know are just not dreams, um, or even conscious waking experiences that they know were an energetic doing, when you chronicle that in linear fashion, in linear order of what took, what took place in the energetic, we are seeing it play out in the same order in the physical. So, for example, a virus was put into the AI that was the, uh, the, the imposed AI that was running the construct. You could say a heart virus, a love virus was put into it. 
And this is part of that tech that included Saturn and the Moon and Mars and Mecca, that technology that was running things. A virus was put into that in the energetic. Is one is just one way of saying this, and then we have seen it play out in the physical. We've seen it play out with um, the shape on Saturn changing and changing color and changing shape. And then there was all these really weird moon anomalies. Um, and then, and this is in order, right? And then. You know, uh, an announcement is made that the prayer call, the Muslim prayer call, would no longer be um, broadcast in Israel. Just funny little chronological order of events. Um, you could say that's, you know, clutching at straws or, or reaching, but they, that's just a surface level indication for me. There's other, many other things. Um, the People went through the veils in the energetic. People went through the big veil in the energetic. People took control of the tech in the energetic. And I believe that's what we're seeing play out. And it's happening in the same order. Now, if that's the case, then many people are expressing, including myself, an inability to see past Mark. People who normally can, you know, look down the timeline, so to speak, can't see past Mark. Um, there was even a very well-known astrologer who puts out free astrology reports on his website and on Facebook, who made an announcement a couple of weeks ago saying he has to do things differently because as, as he was putting March together, he got halfway through March and hit a brick wall. And he has no idea why. Um, there's something, I, I mean, for me, I see it as um, it's a sphere. Normally, when I feel an energy wave coming, it literally looks like a wave to me, visually, and it feels chaotic, like a crashing wave on the top, and it, you know, comes through. And for the very first time, I'm seeing a sphere, a really clean, clear, soft sphere of energy coming through. I have no idea what it means. I have no idea what it's bringing. Um, but it's sitting right there over Mark. And That's very interesting, Lisa. One of the things that uh, that sparks up is uh, what was known as the bump to the remote viewers. Uh, uh -huh. that would occur at 2012 mm -hmm. but it didn't seem to happen did it you know 2012 came and went and blah, blah, blah. and we know that we've been they they they've been stacking shims in <laughs> they've been like you say they've been putting more veils in yep. uh so that it feels like we're taking more time to get to the bump if this is so then this is at once is very good news it's very bad news there's for the powers that be there's a couple Excuse of me? things to say well, there's, there's a couple of things caveats to say. Go ahead. well one is no um one is this this feeling that it's being expressed by a lot of people and even org tellers said it when when he was asked right at the end of the interview that i did with him he was asked what his opinion was on something. He said, no one wants to hear my opinion because as far as I'm concerned, uh, it all ended in 2012 and we're all dead. And that's all he said. And I didn't have time because it was right at the end of the interview to, to really go into it further with him. But there are other people who are expressing this feeling that maybe it did all end in 2012 and we're in some kind of twilight zone, right? Um, or alternative. This is heaven. This could be the après vie, the afterlife. It's funny. I was talking. I was just joking about it because um, uh, thirty-one years ago, I had a near-death experience to the, you know, to the uh, between uh, uh, January and February, and um, 
so it's kind of it's it's fresh in my mind about this this thing um and yeah am i dead and this is all uh this is all like the the end of the, the you know this is the afterlife experience you know is it this well boring? i never watched it <laughs> I never watched it because I, I think I watched the first two or three episodes and, and I found it really boring. But the TV show Lost. Oh, yeah. Right? Um, someone, when I was talking about the waiting room, someone said, you're reminding me of Lost, like the final episode of Lost. And I was like, I never saw it. So I go and watch the final episode of Lost and it turns out that, yes, they're in fact all dead, that they all died at different times. They, it's not even as if they all died on that plane as it crashed on the island. It's, it's, they all died at, di- at varying times. They created the island and a, and a means to get there in the energy or whatever to have these experiences to get to the point where they realised that they were dead. Um, and then they all come together once they have. They created a church, I think it was. They all meet up at the church and then the doors open and they all can walk out together. Um, and that the... A soul group well, journey. The premise put forward quite a bit lately. Yeah. So, a soul group journey, Lisa, you could say. Could we say that all over the world we're all going through the same process? We're all going through a soul group journey. And the reason that you're waiting is because you're there first and you've got to wait for everybody else to arrive. Now, here's the interesting thing. In the show after this show, in my there's uh, hours seven and eight of uh, my uh, eight hour marathon every Sunday, let me know, every Sunday. Um, hours seven and eight um, often involve talking about um, crossing over the dead. Uh, and one of the uh, one of the uh, members of the group there, uh, the Earth Healers group, they um, lives in Hawaii and has contact with various different soul groups who uh, have been sitting in the spirit world waiting to be all passed over at the same time. And it really reminds me of what you're saying. It, it's, it's that same, we all want to go together. And there's a feeling about this. This happens. For instance, a lot of people want to be with their lover at the end of the world, don't they? Let's, yeah. let's walk across together, you and me, you, whatever the soulmate relationship is, whatever, that, whatever you might call it. But you, you want to step across with that person by your side kind of feeling. Here's... I don't know whether to take that literal, as if in the, you know, the 2012 thing we all died in 2012. I actually am not seeing it as literal, but what I also what I do know is that in the again in the, in the energetic, when people have been come together and done work, that there we realised that we had a window. We could have ended this in 2012. But it would have been like pulling the plug out of the back of the neck for a lot of people. These people are not ready to be disconnected yet, Neo. Yes. And uh, we, I don't know, we figured out that there, we had a window of time and that we could stretch it out a little bit to make that easier before we took any risk of them being able to reset, replay, redo, all of that. Not because we needed more time to win the war or any anything like that. I actually, it, there has, I do believe there's been a war. Yeah. It's, yeah. Been a it's war to be gentle on long. the people. And yes. we've, we've have suffered very, very greatly. Everybody yes. has. More than, more than we needed to. And um, that, that's, you know, that's one of the th- ways we, we feel pissed off with the Dracos because they, they really put their foot in the door, you know, to stop mm. it closing kind of thing. Absolutely. Time and time again. Yeah. Buckers. Right. Mm. But uh, <laughs> to me, the war is over. The war is, has been won. 
And we are literally now going through the process of what we did in the energetic. Um, and the process of waking through the veils. Um, and that isn't to say that there is um, nothing left to do because if you feel the pull, if you feel the, you know, that moment of, oh, there's something, then do it because that's you acting out what you've already done in the energetic. That's you going through the motions. Don't fight it. But in terms of a battle or a fight, I, I honestly think it's done. And... I have no idea what this is going to look like. You know, maybe the world just gets slowly, incrementally better. Maybe the construct literally collapses before our eyes. Um, maybe we all wake up in a completely different reality. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> or oh, 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 we wake up, step out of the door, and we're on some industrial estate somewhere. <laughs> you know, it's just like, oh... It's just like here. It's just like there. It's just like here. It's just like there. <laughs> exactly. Oh, where's the taxi? You know. Um, oh, there's so many. Right, right, hang on. They. Oh, okay. Hang on a second. They want to see me, so I have to click the button. There we go. Hello, people. This is what I look like. Hello. Yeah. Fine. 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 Lisa's much nicer. Oh, to we actually do have people live. Yeah, we got. Uh, yeah, we got uh, people watching. Uh, people chatting in the chat room um oh, <laughs> and, I can't see uh, you can't see anything we're, we're we're on various places we're on youtube and there's there's a chat room on youtube that i have no idea what is going on there because i'm not looking at that one uh we've got a chat room on uh wallspirit.tv which is the same as the wallspirit radio chat room um and uh so that's where most people are <laughs> looking my smashing self all right but yeah so uh where are we yeah so wow okay so it's all about construct now it's very interesting because um uh, you you know rebecca jernigan don't you yes well i don't know her anymore, but i know of her yes all right because this is one of the things that she always was talking about is the construct um i've done a couple of shows with her on my youtube channel about exactly this the construct um, well, I've been wanting to reach out to and have a conversation with myself about the construct. So. Yeah, so she's just coming back online. She's she's not been well for a couple of years, but uh, she's coming back online, and and we'll be doing a, a Monday show. I'll be producing her show. It'd be great. She can have her show back, and I don't have to do four hours of radio a week. <laughs> I can do two. Um, and uh, you see, I, it's, I got this thing, Lisa. You know, you know, guys are not supposed to talk like there's like women are supposed to have like 10,000 words, and guys speak about 516. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, most of them are grunts, and most <laughs> of them are, refer to food or sex. But it's like I have to speak so much doing the radio that I, like, I feel like I've used all my words up, <laughs> all my quota up. Yeah, I can so feel anyway. like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm sure you're, 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 you'll be you'll be fading faster. Stop whining about the men's world a little bit. I will stop whining one day. Anyway, <laughs> so where were we? So we got we got the um, and so we're talking about the exit of the construct, and the exit of the construct requires us to connect with our. Um, you could say our future selves. This is, you know, this is again tying into my experience in the last few weeks is connecting with my time traveling future self. Because if it is a construct, then you can do anything the heck you want and you can time yep. space travel without. And like you were saying before, you know, you guys needed to somehow believe that you could be picked up in a ship to be taken to a place. Whereas really all you need to do is do computer end program and the um and the door appears and but it would too much of a shock it'd be too much of a shock to um experience that in these bodies which aren't kind of used to this kind of stuff it's the body that that has the latency of emotional uh, lag lagging that prevents us from moving quickly from one state to another it's too much of a shock it's like being thrown into ice water 
or oh, boiling um, water. When we've been so programmed and, and, and um, whatever the word is, <laughs> to associate ourselves with these bodies, to believe that this is all there is, as well as a fear of death, um, it's the easiest way to control people, you know, um, that we can't, I don't, I don't know, we've gotten so far, so deep into this, we've become one with these avatars, you know, and... And we identify with them. And now, you know, oh. we're talking this earlier, we were talking about how people identify with um, what's wrong with the, you know, it's like I've got a... I'm uh, my name's JP and I have you know it's like I've got a car right and I'm walking around I've got a dented front wing and that's who I am that's who I'm, I am I'm one of the dented front wingers you and know? there's a 12 step program and support group you can go to that's right we got support group for your dented car whereas there is a panel beater down the road <laughs> um, but it's it's not always it's not always what you want to feel <laughs> we don't sometimes we have an investment in being ill this is the thing we need to get over the most really Lisa is the investment that people have in their place in the construct which is yes. certainly their status their pride you know I, I yes <laughs> you know that, that one um, their pride that uh, they have achieved a certain amount of um, uh, slave masterhood so to speak that was um that kept them in the place in the matrix believing in the matrix so much that they couldn't let go of the matrix and that's these are the people that's going to be the hardest to save as it were uh pull out because they're invested in their in their part of the matrix they're they're invested into their illness they're invested into their their lifestyle, their job, you know, I'm a street. Oh, better the devil you know, too. Exactly. But I honestly don't feel like there is even this, because <clears throat> I used to be one of those people, say, I've got to save everybody. Um, I've let that go now because I really got to a place uh, relatively recently where I don't think there is going to be anybody left behind. For starters, I don't think anybody needs to be saved anymore. Um, whether they come kicking and screaming is their choice, but the wake up process, as far as I'm concerned, is never good. Um, it, I've also gotten to a place where the, it's an internal, inside job and no one can do it for you, has been very big. Um, no one can do it for me, I can't do it for anybody else. I can be there and support, but that's about the best I can do. Um, and the, th the thing about moving into this space in between, this waiting room in between, is that all that stuff does go. I felt my whole story drop away. All of it. And what a relief it sounds like. It's like no, you don't have to you. tell it anymore. You don't. No. You don't have to be that. Oh, poor me anymore. Oh, what no. you know? And it's like you become the radiance that you are, just radiance. It's so freeing, and I felt literally brand new. No story. No history. Nothing. And I'm seeing a lot of people in that process right now, mm -hmm. and it can take days. Yeah. It can happen in the moment. Actually, I have to say, I have felt that. I felt that 31 years ago when I woke up from deep sleep, three weeks in a coma. And although I was very hungry and I was very, very tired, I hadn't eaten for three weeks, and I was very weak, I felt completely cleansed. Completely like a, a blank sheet with no stuff. And it, you know, took a while before all the guilt of the, you know, hanging around my family and all that guilt and chicken soup built up again. And uh, eventually, so sort of, I became my own, my old neurotic self. But there was this point of clarity, this point of. Now, 
the word that my guides have been using the last few weeks is refreshment. The refreshment is what they call this soft wave of yours. Huh. It's a lovely, lovely way of putting it, the refreshment. So everything is refreshed, recharged, topped up, you know, uh, the contract's renewed, everything's, you know, you got your nice clean, clean motor, you got your, you, you got your house, you got your, everything's just fresh, clean, as if it's just come out of the wrapper. Kind of thing. Oh, I like that word. That's right. You know, I mean, what I've been able to see is it really is a feedback loop, like I talked about, between us and the AI or us and the, 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 what, the system that's running the construct. And we have been subliminally, for the most part, but at other times directly in your face, inputted with information, with programs, with stories, so that we can then project them and have it feedback on us. And because I do not believe that those who have taken over can actually create in the construct. It wasn't designed for them. It was designed for us. It works with our, I'm, I'm going to say DNA, but it's, it's not. It's even more than that. Um, but it is code. So in order to get, they, always, they need us to create the environment that they want. So we are constantly fed programs, stories, narratives, bullshit. It goes in, we project it out, it feeds back on us. So getting to that place of um, zero point so that the only thing you are projecting is coming from within you, learning how to do that is part of this waiting space. Yeah. Learning yeah. how to see it coming. Oh, there's another story for me to hook into. Oh, there's another program. And not and just not taking it on. And 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 practicing how to project purely from your own core. There is I mean and there has been in the new age movement too, this this message that it's all about the heart, it's all about love. And that is absolutely true as far as I'm concerned. The, but I, not the physical heart, not the heart chakra, not the, any of the overlays in the tech and the bullshit. The true core essence of who you are, which is a state of love, is the way out of this construct. Ironically, it's also how to be in the construct and make it work for you. Um, the how do I put this it's a fine line and it takes some practice and discernment to um, retune yourself to really get the subtle differences between uh, what I would call heart chakra, heart program, and your core heart. And it is subtle, but it is there. Um, and when you can get into that place and project from that place, in a state of it sounds like a contradiction because it's in a state of pure love, but it's also in a state of neutrality. Um, things become magical. I'm inclined to extremely agree, but not only that, I'd also like to say that's exactly what the Buddha was teaching. Exactly what. These are exactly Buddha's teachings. You know, the state of non... You know, he was trying to he was trying to stop people from being fanatical. And this is exactly what the problem is. People get fanatical and lose the point of where they're at. 
And when somebody's fanatical, they'll argue about little uh, literal details. They'll argue <laughs> for a start. You know, fanatics like to argue to say, my God is better than your God. Whereas, you know, once you get it, you say, I'm God, you're God, we are God. Let's just be God. You know, let's just hang out. Let's have fun. Let, let's, you know, and the unified state without conflict, but without dominance as well. The state where you recognize that I'm another yourself and I mm -hmm. recognize you as another myself. So I can't like harm you. Yeah, in Lakesh, I can't harm you because I'd be harming myself. I can't diss you because I'd be dissing myself. This is the state where we're all in the white room. And we all are in the white room seeing ourselves because we are seeing ourselves. We are all in the white room, as you are in the white room, as I am in the dark room. <laughs> as you are in the south and I am in the north. Can I ask your, uh, the people who are here? Yeah. I can't sing any. Whether this story is relatable to them, whether it puts their experiences into some sort of perspective that makes sense, whether they're relating to it at all. Oh, yeah. Um, some people are. <laughs> and the uh, others just think they're nuts? Um, no, some people... Um, it, it's because it's we're English. We're speaking English, just like thing um now let me just see if there's any so there's there's people who are talking about saving yourself and being the example for others to witness um uh lisa's message seems very much like george cavasilis now he's a friend of yours is he still uh, yeah he's we, been we on your contact over the last couple of years but yeah i, would still consider I haven't him seen friend. him for ages i hope he's all right i like him he's a nice fellow there's there's um, things that we agree on and things that we disagree on that's of course, fine. of course, um, and you know this, we're we're all on the train. We're all on the freedom train. We just don't have to be on the same carriage. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, oh, Viking. He's saying, I believe what ended in 2012 was the construct of our karmic rebirth, and for the first time in this causal loop of humanity, we all as individuals are being vetted and challenged to either ascend to our true essence of being, or be judged to do this 3D spin all over again as not everyone is going to make it or awaken this time around. What, what do you think? Do you think it's the complete end of the reincarnation cycle or does it still get, does it still apply to those who wish it to apply to? Well, this goes to a personal experience I had in 2011 mm -hmm. and I've now spoken to about four or five people who had the same experience at the same time, which was, I observed, I wasn't participating, but I observed um, the destruction of a facility on the moon, which was what I called the rinse and repeat factory. The, the, the say again, factory. you called what? I called it the rinse and repeat factory. Oh, the rinse and repeat factory. Sorry, you, you got broken up a bit there. Go on. Um, reincarnation as we've experienced it to me is, was a manipulation. So where I sit right now, the way I understand it is that everything is code because this is a holiday. We are a code. We were literally put through the moon cycle again, mind wiped, potentially cloned, our code cloned, you know. Um, and I think that's what a lot of people are referring to and they talk about cloning in that, not in the underground basis kind of cloning, but in a more you know, multi-dimensional aspect. It's like somebody setting yeah. up a fake Facebook ID in front, you know, that yeah. is the same. It's got the, all your pictures, stick to, it's nicked all your pictures, uh, but it is all, you know, started in 2016 sort of thing. We've all seen them. And I think that we are then put back into the system very, very potentially through the same uh, line, family line, bloodline, because there needs to be a match, code match, um, and just my work. And that facility I witnessed being, as I said, blown up, <laughs> destroyed by people, by humans. 
in the energetic um, back in 2011. And I've had people express seeing the same thing to me, not realizing I'd seen it as well, or express uh, the memory of an experience of participating in it. So since that time, Exiting the construct has still been difficult, so I think a lot of those people have chosen not to reincarnate, which might explain the huge increase in orbs <laughs> since that time. Um, because the exits out have all been blocked, so it's not been that easy to get out. I think very few individuals have been able to. Um, all right, so what I just got there, Lisa, is that we as human beings can in fact create our own portal out because they've closed down all the like obvious external ones but the last one is the one that we have inside of us all of us in our heart yes. in that place where the source lies and right so to me to access that to get to that place it's all about breathing right because when we don't have enough oxygen in our brains, we can't think and feel clearly. So I encourage my people to breathe in through their nose and out through the mouth and that cools everything down. And that allows a free flow of subconscious information through. It's you know, someone expressed to me yesterday yeah? that this energy that they also feel is coming, that, you know, what I'm calling this sphere. Mm -hmm said to me, they can feel this energy coming and they feel like it's going to go through us and open up what you just said, open up this portal within us. Mm -hmm. It's going to open and we can walk through. Mm -hmm. but, or so we turn you know, inside out like a buckyball. Something like that too. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Uh, and there's a, there's a sense of we are in bizarro world we are in upside down back to front world you know looking at our eyeballs actually physically when we see stuff through our eyes it's upside down and back to front but our brain turns it round that's been proved mm -hmm. you know that's a mm -hmm. um and here we are in bizarro world where everything's backwards and upside down um and the real world somehow is where everything is all correct or rectified so you know, the, think, um, go on. sorry, uh, Friday, um, I think it was Friday, very, very suddenly, very out of the blue, I got hit, I guess you could say, with this feeling. And it was like excited anticipation. And it was as if someone was kind of talking to me telepathically in a sense, like I didn't hear voices or anything, but it was words formed based on feeling. And it was get ready, it's time to prepare, and it's time to prepare your mind for what is about to happen, for what's next. Um, but I feel like someone who just got told to get dressed, we're going out, and I have no idea where we're going. Do I get dressed for the beach, for a cocktail party? To, I have no idea. <laughs> so there's this sense of needing to get my mind prepared, my mind wrapped around what could possibly happen next without having any idea of what that could be. And based on my own experiences, certainly since 2012, that we've had no, we have no idea how this is going to look, how this can look, what this is going to look like. Um, no one saw the Mandela effect come, you know. I mean, I had an experience on Christmas Day 2013. I was out of my body for like nine, ten hours of the day. I had no recall. None. Apparently, I was physically walking around on Christmas Day saying the timelines are collapsing. The timelines are collapsing. The timelines are collapsing. That's all I did. Right? I have no recall. I uh, had no idea what that could possibly mean or how that would look or that it would, in fact, show up in the physical. 
but then the Mandela effect shows up. Um, so there's no way. Oh, there's a little fly flying. There. Um, I know. So he landed right in your in your third eye there. Boop. Just to give you give your pineal hit. Hello, little fly. There's, there's no way of knowing what this is going to look like. At least not for me. I don't know. Um, but every day or every few days, every week at least, something comes a little bit clearer. Just enough. Just enough to get me through the next few days, week, or week, whatever, um, <clears throat> without losing my mind. Um, although I'm sure to some people it probably looks like I already have. Um, I don't, I mean, I, you're, you're probably aware of Yellow Rose for Texas, for example. Uh huh. So she talks about us, we will literally stand up out of our bodies. There's one concept. Um, there's personal experiences I had going back 10, 15 years of being totally awake and conscious and it was as if my vision was a projector screen, a movie screen, and a tear opened up in it and widened and I could see, it was like looking through a movie screen to what was behind it. It happened, I don't know, a dozen times over three or four years. And what I saw was always the same. It was this incredibly beautiful um, natural scene. And I'd be looking, I'd be at home looking at a wall and I'm seeing this. You know. um, at one point, I think it was the last time it actually happened, maybe. I felt like I could reach through it. I was terrified. <laughs> um, so is it something like that? Does it does it literally start to blend out on us? Um, do we wake up somewhere else? Does does it just start to shift and change and slowly become a better place? I don't know. No idea what it looks like. But there's been a lot of people over the years who have felt the, what, what we've been calling the event, you know, some moment where everything changes. People have had dreams about it. People have had dreams and visions of a wall, r rushing to a wall and tearing it down or feeling like they're inside a dome and it just collapses and there's a whole other reality on the other side. Um, a doorways opening up with, with guards on them, ushering people out. You know, it, it looks, looks different for, you know, for a lot of people, but the theme is there. Um, the sense of an event. And like you mentioned, you know, the bump with the RV, remote viewers. Um, that something is happening and that something is imminent, I think if most people are honest with themselves, will agree with. You know, you were talking about a sense of excitement earlier on. Mm -hmm. Or that this building sense of excitement. I've been getting that. And, you know, I actually felt it um, a few hours before I started broadcasting. I was just this little lift. Oh, ooh, ooh. You know, it's like, oh, that's, that's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's actually going to be fun. It's actually going to, it's actually going to, it's, my God, it's actually going to work out. Holy Lord. Um, and, and this is the, the, um, the connection that I had with, again, with my future self proves that it's all going to be all right. And we're going to, we're going to work it out. And, you know, it doesn't matter about Trump. It doesn't really matter about money. It doesn't, taxes really don't matter. It, you know, when you get to that white room, what the heck matters anymore? None of it. Hey, Lisa. It's all a hologram. It's all a hologram. It's all an illusion. Yeah. Exactly what Buddha was trying to say, that he didn't have the word for hologram. That's all. You know, when, I, when this feeling hit me on Friday, it was, oh, it was like I'm about to step up on stage or I'm standing on the edge of a cliff about to bungee jump. It was that 
that kind of excited anticipation slash fear slash whatever. Yeah, like stage fright, yeah. Yeah. And before, before expressing anything online, I went to Facebook, I went to the UU room, and there was probably four different posts from people saying something that they were feeling this. Where did this come from? Like, what's going on? Including, you know, someone talking about their not, their 11-year-old daughter it's saying something, something, and something's happening. Like, I'm not feeling it. And she at first thought it was, she interpreted it as fear. And I asked the, the woman, can you please ask your daughter to really tune into it? And say, is it fear or is it this excited anticipation thing? And the daughter fed back with, oh, yeah, it's like butterflies. Mm, um, otherwise. And she felt really positive about it. She didn't feel negative or fearful. So this is a new feeling that's just kind of hit. Um, but with me, it also came with that message of get, it's time to get your, head, your mind around the possibilities. Because whatever it is, I don't think we've conceived of it yet. You know, we've got a lot of, you know, like I just said, we've got a few different scenarios that we can try and get our heads around, but it may be, it may be completely different to that again. Essentially, we have to learn to be jazz. We have to learn to improvise in the moment with whatever resources are available to us. We have to be ultimately creative. We have to be a combination of Doctor Who, MacGyver, and Captain America. I don't know. <laughs> you know, um, and we can't resist anything. There's no resistance. The, the resistance is futile. But there's ways there's ways of getting to where you're going, by. Um, I've got a brilliant thing, Lisa. I want to show you this. All right, I was I was, I was showing it on the um, on the uh, on the webinar the other day. Um, but uh, it's called a flippy flux. Have you ever seen one of these things? It's about it's to magic. do something. So this is. Oh, yes, 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 yes. It's a vortex. Mm -hmm. And um, the, this, is, this is the clever bit, right? If you twist it, uh, count, now what's the word? Counter-rotationally, right? If I move my hands, it opens a portal in the middle. Can you see that? Yep. That's how we alter the fabric of space-time. We create a vortex, we expand the middle, and we just... We just step through. Yep. Go right through it. And what if that happens from the inside out? It's you. This is who we are. <laughs> well, there, I love this there thing. Again, there again goes the, the themes, the experiences and the themes mm -hmm. about what happened in the energetic and what's happening now. Because people have exp expressed it to me as like water going down a drain or the Fibonacci sequence, or a, a spiral, toroidal spiral. Yeah, um, it's all this. This is the same thing. Oh. It, it's a roidal spiral. And as you twist it, I, I don't know if I'm, I'm trying to get the angle right, so that you can see what's going on. That when you twist it, there we go, you see the portal opening up in the center. So well, it's, the about, it's about counter-rotation. You yeah. see? You see, then and then the part, then you the portal passes through you without tearing the fabric of space time. You kind of roll it. It's cool stuff. I love it. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we've got about ten minutes left. So, uh, resources. If people uh, want to know more about Lilu. And really more about this process of creating the portal out. Um, you've got a whole bunch of people who are at different stages, which is quite handy because it means that each one to each one, you know, people can draw each other and their friends through one by one. And we come through as a completely linked part of one of these. Woo. <laughs> so like we're all part of that big toroidal process. And that's how atoms are made. 
are made up as well and all of these things magnetic fields electric fields radio waves this is all the same thing and uh, it all operates the same way and by putting that counter rotation in and that's the the Merkaba meditation you know when you do the Merkaba meditation you you have um, tetrahedron <laughs> etc oh, let me just put my, my screen on um, present to everyone there we go we have a tetrahedron come on there we go we have a tetrahedron there's a tetrahedron four-sided pyramid um, or a triangular pyramid and then you have another one forced um, into it yep. to create that one yep. um, and then the, you know this one's made of uh, jasper stone but um, if you can imagine these two tetrahedrons passing through each other rotating one in one direction and the other in the uh, opposite direction you get the same thing and you imagine that right in the middle of your head um, and uh, amazing things happen then that's called a Merkaba um, they call that the Merkaba meditation uh, or Mechaba and um, that creates this inside your beingness it may well be part of the process that we need to go through mm -hmm. as we go through these veils. But I do believe that that Merkaba, you don't want to get stuck there. That is the fifth dimensional tech. And I think, like you just said, you have to go through that in order to get to the next one, which is this. Both yeah, don't get stuck in the car. It's the car. It's not the, it's not the destination. It's just the vehicle. Yep. Um, and there's spirals and Tauruses and you know these are all levels of the tech and all levels of the veils. And you ne and you go through them. Um, my there's a. I don't want to say word of warning, but don't don't get stuck on the Merkaba and think you've done it. That's your vehicle out of here. It's not. It's your vehicle to the next level. Um, it's, that's my experience and, and uh, perspective. Um, There is a point through all of these different modalities. And, and you know, I, I had my head completely up the new age <laughs> too. And for a long time and went through a lot of these different things and, and worked with chakras and Merkabas and activated this and that and everything else. But there was a point there where I left each and every one of them behind. Um, and, we, and just allowed it to evolve and change. Yeah, and so you uh, should. To the point where it's all gone. That's right. You know? um, They're all means, but you see, I see you. I, I, yeah, I get you. I, I see your vibration. You, you've got to a point that goes beyond having to, you know, and this is what my show is about, beyond gurus, beyond teachers. When you start to become what is known as self-realized, you connect with yourself, you connect into your, into your inner self and start expressing that, and then you discover who you are in that. And we're all doing it individually. It's an inside job, and yet we're all doing it yep. collectively. Yeah, and, and we're all in the white room. Mm. Ultimately, um, I'm excited. I am. I'm excited about whatever's next, um, whatever that looks like. Um, there are people who are still in a dark place. I get that. Um, and polarized by what they're seeing in the world. But if you can just pull your attention away from that long enough to put it within and allow what's in there to to come out and, and hear it 
really hear it. There is a tone, there is music, there is sound that you emanate. That is the, if you can hear that, everything changes. Um, and right now it feels like we are a choir. You know, everybody is starting to tune their own individual instrument, you know. And it's a bit messy and discordant right now and it sounds kind of off. But it's starting to harmonise. And once we get enough people singing in harmony, I don't know. Yeah, it's like when the orchestra is just tuning up, you know, it sounds very, and then suddenly, ta -da, and they're all in concert. They're all yep. together. And yep. I'm feeling that, and a shivery feeling it be, indeed, right up and down my spine, that this moment, now it's really funny because people talked about Oh, it'll be March the 18th next year. Uh, this is all last year. And um, it's my birthday, right? And oh. I was thinking, that would be just bloody typical. <laughs> it's like we have... But, you know, we are born on these days for a reason. We're born to be in tune with that. So my solar connection is in tune with that. It's a a portal. Perhaps that's the portal that I can use to then maybe open that portal up for everybody else to get the vibration going. You know, there are people who wake up first and that, then they wake up everybody else and then the other everybody else wakes up everybody else, if you see what I mean. So uh, we're all moving and it's happening and I think you're dead right that sometime mid-March there's going to be such a shift as we won't um we've never seen before i think it, it's really because it's uh, the people i mean you your people right you know you've got 1500 people in your group you can feel as a barometer there's a tension rising there's a pressure building and it's a pressure that at some point is gonna and turn inside out it has to do something something yeah <laughs> It's like when you crack your knuckles, you know, you put your pressure on the joints and you know you're not gonna, it's not going to snap in half, but it'll go and that'll be a release. Yep. But what final I, final thoughts. I mean, the, the, well, the thing is, final thoughts, it's a process. And I actually think each and every one of us are going through the same process. We're all at different parts of the process um, and even for, I mean I, you, I just have to go into my regular Facebook feed to see that people who have no concept of any of this are still experiencing it they just don't know where to put it they have no context for it they think they're losing their minds they think they're having uh, early onset dementia they think there's something physically wrong with them because they've, they've got no context for it but they're still experiencing it and it's really difficult for them. They don't understand why their relationships are breaking down or why the, the, the person that they've known for 20 years suddenly feels like a completely different person and is acting like a completely different person. Um, so whether you whether you have a context or a knowledge or not is irrelevant. Like I've, I've seen this process take place. Um, and even though it's it expresses itself slightly uniquely for each of us, it does seem to be the same steps, um, and we're getting we're, get, we're sort of meet, uh, getting to a meeting place. I'll see you on the other side of this because we haven't got very many shows till then. So <laughs> who knows what's going to be on the other side? Who knows? I might be able to step out of my room and into your living room here, there in Australia, because time and space mean, mean a different thing. Who never knows? I might still have to get on an aeroplane. Who knows? I don't know. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be lovely. Lisa Harrison, thank you. It's been delightful to, uh, to throw some of these high tensile ideas around. And there's, there's something happening. 
we can both feel it. Every, all our people can feel it. It's happening soon. This has yeah. been Ever Beyond. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night, Lisa. Beyond.